Did you know that these video episodes tell just one of the three user-submitted stories we adapt for the podcast each week? The chills and spills continue on the Something Scary podcast. Hear the rest for free on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You know about neighborhood watch street signs, right? I mean, especially during the holidays, neighbors watching out for neighbors is how we can help keep our community safe and in the know-how about things as fun as an upcoming neighborhood holiday barbecue are banding together to make sure that Krampus isn't on the hunt in our neck of the woods. Well, get this. The Neighborhood Watch is now an app on your phone. The app's called Neighbors and it's by Ring. That's the company behind those video doorbells and security cameras. With the Neighbors app, you receive real-time crime and safety alerts from your neighbors. And it's free. You don't even need to own a Ring device. The app was super helpful for me and some other neighbors last week. We were able to let our neighbor know that their new dog wasn't adjusting to being alone that well. I mean, the poor puppy was barking and howling while their owners were away. So thanks to the app, we were able to let them know what was going on with their pet when they weren't there. So it was helpful for everybody. So if you want to see what's going on in your neighborhood, download the free Neighbors app today. Go to ring.com slash scary to download from the Apple or Android app stores. That's ring.com slash scary. Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? Legend of the Tokoloshi. Moving to a new place can be exciting, but also a bit nerve wracking. Will kids at school accept you? Will you make new friends? Will you have to hide from an ancient South African monster climbing into your bedroom? That last bit might be a bit specific, but it falls right in line with today's story, inspired by a submission from Lily. My name is Driana, and I'm originally from Pretoria a city in South Africa. As a kid, the only stories I'd heard about the Tokoloshi came from my cousins in smaller villages. But last year, my family moved north to Botswana to a remote village called Mochudi, where people really believed in spirits. My new schoolmates always talked about the Tokoloshis, which they said were conjured when an enemy placed a hex on you covered in patchy dark hair and only a couple of feet tall. They crawl out of wetlands at night, shape-shifting through closed doors and windows to get into your bedroom. It all sounded like fantasy to me. The only thing odd about our new house so far was that at sundown, a woman in all black would walk our street. I assumed she was a Moswagadi, a widow, since black was what widows wore in our culture. Otherwise, the house was perfect and the best part was my bedroom. I didn't even mind sleeping with my mattress on the floor while we waited for my new bed frame to arrive. One night, as I was fast asleep, something bit hard into my left big toe. I tossed back the covers, but nothing was there. Ugh, we must have rats, I thought. So the next day, I asked my mom for help and she laid out traps around my bed. That night, I was only half asleep when a surge of pain rippled through my right foot. I flung off the covers to see a tiny, mangy-haired creature biting down on my bloody foot with its sharp, rotten teeth. Its blue eyes cast a stare of pure evil at me. Horrified, I screamed for my parents, who ran in as the Tokoloshi slithered out the window, unseen. But what my parents did see, written on the wall in blood, was my name, Driana. I tried to explain what had happened, but they were convinced I was just making a scene to get attention. I had acted out and drawn on the walls as a child, but never with my own blood. Regardless, they patched my toe up and towed me to go to bed. At school the next day, my friend Laredo told me I was lucky I awoke. If it got its teeth in you, you could get a horrible illness, paralysis, even death. Tokoloshis were invisible to anyone but their victims, he explained which is why my parents couldn't see it. But who would have put a hex on you, Laredo pondered. My mind immediately went to the woman in black. As the sun set that night, the Maswagadi made her rounds, and I asked my dad to mention the Tokoloshi to her, but he refused, saying it would be offensive. Luckily, Laredo told me another way to deal with the Tokoloshi, get to higher ground. So, my parents placed my mattress on four chairs, and I was confident I would finally be free of it. But the second I drifted off, 
I felt a stinging sensation as jagged teeth sunk into my toes. I kicked, but the tokoloshi held on, biting deeper as it grinned at me. I shrieked for help as I felt my body go numb from the waist down. It was paralyzing me. My parents hurried in, unable to see the tokoloshi as it slithered off. Angry I'd awoken them, they scolded me and left the room. All alone, I realized that if I was going to rid myself of the tokoloshi, I'd have to handle it myself. I looked out my window to see the Moswagati passing by. My legs still tingled, but I got them moving and ran out the house after her. Have a problem with me? I asked her. She slowly turned around and glared down at me. Yes, she replied, you're in my home. The home I was forced to sell to your family when my husband passed. I felt bad for her. Leaving home was bad enough for me, I couldn't imagine losing one. Still, it was not my fault. I had to stand my ground. I'm sorry for your loss, I said, but I can't help what my parents did. Now take that hex off me. The Maswagadi grinned and said, if that's what you wish. As I returned home and got into bed, it felt like the curse was lifted. I laid back when horrific cries came from my parents' bedroom. I ran in to see my parents' feet being shredded by something invisible. I froze in shock, realizing the awful truth. The Maswagadi had removed my curse, but my parents would suffer and pay for it. Thank you to all of our patrons, especially Driana, who had a character named after them in this episode. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com snarled. It's the holiday season, and while it's great to buy gifts, it's even better to spend less on those gifts by finding the lowest price by using Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best promo codes and other discounts. It saves you money by scanning over 20,000 internet sites like Amazon and Expedia when you're shopping online. So my mom enjoys holistic foods and also loves to bake dessert holiday gifts for others. So this year, amongst other things, I bought her an early holiday present of a large jar of Manuka honey on Amazon. It's great for health and it's awesome for baking so she can enjoy both of her passions. And I saved $7 on that honey by using honey. So if you're buying gifts this holiday season, then you need honey. If you're not, you probably know someone who is, so do them a solid and tell them about honey. Honey can help make sure that you're getting the best price for whatever you're buying. It's free to use and it installs in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash SS. That's joinhoney.com slash SS. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast. Available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary at snarl.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings, sweet dreams.